Saren Kierkegaard, Various Readings The Concise Dictionary of Religious Knowledge and Gazetter Edited by Talbot Wilson Chambers, Frank Hugh Foster, Samuel Macaulay Jackson, in 1889 Pages 473 to 475 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Kierkegaard, Surin Abbey, by C. H. A. Jerigord. Born at Copenhagen, May 5, 1818. Died the same place, November 11, 1855, having never left his native city for more than a few days at a time, excepting once, when he went to Germany to study Schelling's philosophy. He was the most original thinker and theological philosopher the North ever produced. His fame has been steadily growing since his death, and he bids fair to become the leading religio-philosophical light of Germany. Not only his theological, but also his ascetic works has of late become the subject of universal study in Europe. As a boy, Søren Kierkegaard was weak in health rather morbid and precocious. From his father, a Jutland peasant and wool handler in Copenhagen, he inherited a sharp wit and keen insight, together with a large amount of melancholy, traits that led him into much trouble and laid him in an early grave. In 1830 he graduated from the University of Copenhagen, and ten years later he passed the theological examination, but neither sought nor ever filled any public ministry. His degree of M.A. he earned by an essay on irony, the main concept of his future philosophy. His father left him a fortune, which enabled him to live in independent and elegant retirement. But he was most literally alone in the world, as he said himself, quote, Knowing all, I am known by nobody, end quote. He was never married, though for a few months engaged. Søren Kierkegaard's writings abound in psychological observations and experiences, great penetration and dexterous experimentation, all of which enable him to speak of that which but few know and fewer still can express. His diction is noble, his dialectics refined and brilliant. Scarcely a page of his can be found which is not rich in poetic sentiment and passionate, though pure enthusiasm. It is generally conceded that his literary productions overflow with intellectual wonders. Still, it must be said that he is often more fascinating and seductive than convincing. He defined his task to be, quote, to call attention to Christianity, unquote, to make himself an instrument to summon people to the truly human, ideal or true Christianity, so little known, as he claimed, and to which he wanted to call attention, is neither a theory, scientific or otherwise, but a life and a mode of existence, a life which nature can neither define nor teach. It is an existence rooted wholly in the beyond, though it must be realized in actual life. Christian truth is not and cannot be the subject of science, for it is not objective, but purely subjective, he does not deny the value of objective science. He admits its use and necessity in the real world, but he utterly discards any claims it may lay to the spiritual relations of the Christian, relations which are and can be only subjective, personal, and individual. Defined, his perception is this, quote, subjectivity is the truth, unquote a doubtful proposition and only true with regard to the one who could say about himself quote, i am the truth unquote. rightly understood it is the speculative principle of protestantism but wrongly conceived it leads to a denial of the church idea however the main element of this philosophy would not have met with any determined opposition had kierkegaard moderated his language as it was, he defiantly declared war against all speculation as a source of Christianity, and opposed those who seek to speculate on faith, as was the case in his day and before, thereby striving to get an insight into the truths of revelation. Speculation, he claimed, leads to, quote, a fall 
unquote, and to a falsification of the truth. He would protect faith from speculation by declaring it to be beyond reasoning, because it is, quote, absurd, unquote, or even, quote, divinely absurd, unquote. Crato qui absurdum est, as he said. Again, he declared that Christianity is, quote, the absolute paradox, unquote, which must be believed in defiance of all reason, quote, in virtue of the absurd, unquote. Here he gave offense, and so he did, too, when he propounded his method of arriving at Christian truth. In answering that to him momentous question, how do I become a Christian? He does not point directly to faith and the imitation of Christ, but proposes the Socratic method of, quote, betrayal into truth, unquote. Quote, it is just the Socrates of which this world, perplexed by its great knowledge, stands in need, unquote. To help it to turn against speculation, quote, to make difficulties, unquote. To disperse all imaginary knowledge and to evoke soberness. He was right enough when he insisted upon the category of, quote, the individual, unquote, in opposition to pantheism and the dead churchism of his day. Without personal relationship, the cause of Christianity falls to the ground. Quote, everyone must navigate the sea of this world in his own little kayak, unquote. To be saved, quote, one must embark in the vessel of his own individuality, unquote. But he denies the church idea and leads us astray when he says, quote, Every human being of earnest mind who knows what edification means, everyone, whatever else they may be, high or low, wise or simple, man or woman, everyone who has felt the power of edification or God present with them will grant me unconditionally that it is impossible to edify or to be edified in mass. Edification, yet more than love, can only bear relation to the individual. The individual, not in the sense of the distinguished and specially endowed, but the individual, in the sense in which everyone ought and can be such, in which he must place his honor, nay, his salvation, on attaining, unquote. He destroys all ministry and makes Christ the savior of the individual only, overlooking both the church and the world, when he says, quote, the individual. This category has only been employed once before, the first time in a decidedly dialectic manner by Socrates, in order to overthrow paganism. In Christianity, on the other hand, it is to be employed this second time to make men, i.e. nominal Christians, real followers of Christ. It is not the category of the missionary in regard to the heathen, which he announces to the Christian world, but it is the missionary's category within Christendom itself to reintroduce Christianity into Christendom, unquote. His one-sided interest in, quote, the individual, unquote, led him to a false position in regard to the established state church, or as he called it, quote, official Christianity, unquote, which was, as he repeatedly declared, quote, a vast deception, unquote. It also made him antagonistic to church people at large, quote, the thousands of people who call themselves Christians, but have their lives in entirely different categories, unquote. During the last few years of his life, he became quite violent in his denunciations, particularly so after the funeral of Bishop Minster, a man and a minister of no remarkable qualities, whom Bishop Martinson extravagantly characterized as, quote, witness of truth, unquote. In a periodical, The Moment, established and owned by Kierkegaard, he overdid himself and made himself the laughingstock of many. In the most extraordinary language, he abused the clergy for their easygoing ways, for making a, quote, living out of the wounds and bruises of Christ, unquote, and took them to task for their hypocrisy and betrayal of the cause of Christ. In the same paper, he also frequently wrote about, quote, the dreadful air, unquote, to suppose that, quote, because one outwardly is within the vessel of the church, outwardly belongs to the community of the true church. He therefore has an insurance upon eternal bliss, unquote. Sir and Kierkegaard's influence was good in many ways, but he never had the effect he expected, and died a disappointed man. 
He did cause many to ask about Christ and the living ways. He also influenced the clergy for the better. But it can be said on good evidence that he did a great deal of harm too. His characterizations of Christianity as a paradox and an absurdity and of the church as a vast deception became the stumbling block for many and caused much suffering and offense. The use, one of his followers and a teacher in the university, the late Professor Rasmus Nielsen, made of his phraseology, set an absolute barrier against belief in many a student's heart, and much of modern Danish infidelity and blasphemy may be laid at the door of both teacher and pupil. End of recording Kierkegaard, Soren Aube, by C. H. A. Gerigord the Concise Dictionary of Religious Knowledge and Gazetter, 1889, pages 473 to 475.